Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Autumn's Podcast, where this, this podcast discusses about my research on music and autism within education and in the music industry. Today I'm joined by uh, a sound engineer who's uh, done a lot of work for the BBC, but was also starred in the pop in the um, the documentary series on BBC Three called Autistic Superstars. Please welcome Dafford Mann. Welcome Dafford. Oh hi, it's great to be with you. Yeah, good. Great to be with you too. Yeah, well, um, I actually first heard about you through Autistic Superstars that just aired on BBC Three about thirteen years ago in two thousand ten, because I know you um you you were the guy who was playing the guitar, and I, I thought, yeah, I definitely love love that guy. He was a great guitarist, and he the way he performed was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, because I, I just want to discuss about like, your times in Autistic Superstars and how you um got up to the man you are today, like working in, as a sound engineer for like many big companies and stuff. Well, so, I mean, when, when it all started, I was, um, I must have been in like high school or something. Yeah. And yeah. I, I remember like my mum came into my bedroom and she, she was like, David, the, I've just had a phone call with the BBC. I was like, what? what? Why? Mm. And then, then it was like, they want you to play guitar on the television. And I was like, no, they don't. <laughs> and that, that's kind of how it all started, really. Yeah, um, because yeah. I've been I've been playing for years and years and years ever since I was very young because I found it very therapeutic playing the guitar. Mm. It just it was just it's just been one of the things that I've I've done and ever ever since it's it's really pushed my education. It's been what got me back into school because I, I spent quite a bit of time out of school. But yeah. I was doing the so we did the documentary and of course the cameras start turning up to your house. Yeah, and. Yeah. I, it, it was very exciting, but it was quite challenging, really. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I know, like, being the BBC, being the biggest company in the in Great Britain and all, and uh, I know, like, because um, I know there's, like, a lot of people that starred in that show, because I know you've got, like, Martin Finn, the um, the singer, and, of course, Carly Ryan. Uh, I know that Martin Finn, he, um, I tried looking for him, like, through the, um, all social media, because I know he just uh, did an armor called One in a Million. I think it was, um, I think he did like a remastered version of his first one in a million album. And of course, uh, Derek Paravicini, the piano player, who's also like in the spectrum himself. Cause I, I've seen uh, your videos on YouTube as well. Like you're talented with autistic superstars and then just did um, a few gigs with uh, the rest of the, um, with the people who were taking part of the series. And, uh, but yeah, it's, um, I think you were definitely um, my, my one inspiration because like being a guitarist myself, like, I know you, um, you're you're a blues player as well. It's um, yeah, it definitely. I think Autistic Superstars is a very inspiring uh, show, to be honest. Because I, or being in the spectrum myself, as, as I said before, it's uh, it's definitely um, gave me, yeah, it it really gave me like the um the boost to like carrying with music, like carrying playing guitar, and uh, also being a being a composer myself, and also edit, editing the sound. Because I know you've uh, you've been um, doing the sound engineering business for some time now, haven't you? Because I know you've uh, as on your website it says you've worked for the BBC and of course the ITV and it also said he worked for Netflix as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause no Netflix is like a, a really huge organization now because I know they've got branches all over the world. Cause like they, they make like um, different shows all over the world. Like it's including anime that uh, people have been watching these days quite a lot now. Yeah. Cause I know it's um, also you, you're self-employed as well. Cause I know it's, um, but what is it like being in the business for you? Like, um, like working with like different clients and uh, also getting to know other connections as well. So, so I've been doing this for about seven years now. So basically when I came out of uni, uh, so I, I love music. I absolutely love music, but I kind of realized when I was in uni that I would either be making music and staying poor or doing something else <laughs> and making money. And I could still do my music on the side. Yeah. So, I, I decided instead of like recording bands and all that, I just, I, I tried some television. I was like, people are going to pay me. I don't even have experience and people are paying me. Yeah. And I was like, may maybe there's something here. So, you know, honed my craft a bit and then got on some bigger and bigger and bigger stuff. And now I regularly work for This Morning on ITV and mm. I've done Blue Peter for the BBC, done Doctors, Hollyoaks, done some, some pretty big stuff. So. That's been tremendously exciting, including some Netflix shows. I can't even tell you what the Netflix 
show is going to be. It's a very big deal. Mm. Um, but <laughs> I can't even tell you because it's 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 that high yeah. profile now. So yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it's really exciting, but it's it, it's it's an enormous challenge every every day because the 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 hours that you have to work they're between like twelve and up to fourteen hours a day. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of communication with people, which is something that I sometimes I, I appear very confident, but yeah. actually when when you don't see me, there's a lot of anxiety around talking yeah, exactly, to people. Definitely. Yeah, that's it's definitely common for like people like us in the in the spectrum, but also like um other people that's uh in both levels of the spectrum, because now you've got like, the non-verbal and, and the verbal, but also like, got the yeah. uh, high functioning and just uh, overall autism. It's like I've, um, well, as a sound engineer myself, I've worked with like some independent bands, like I worked with Sugarstone and Tom Lerner, who's like associated with a band called The Senate. And of course, um, I've worked just recent moments ago, I worked with a band called Wing Spread, who's like a, um, a jazz fusion, like it's like jazz mixed with heavy metal music and Indian folk music. And it's, uh, and um but yeah because i know it's um the recognition in the business it's it is really um difficult today because i know like uh, a lot of people are depending on social media these days like um say if you got like tiktok and i get like loads of views on some of your videos like promoting yourself because i know you i know you have a youtube channel as well and also like other social medias as well but yeah uh, um because I know, like, um, in some of the other members of the like, Autistic Superstars, I know Derek in particular has got a YouTube channel himself, but um, also, like, the um, some of the videos that he posted on on a YouTube channel, I think that performance he did with uh, Derek and his mentor, uh, Adam Ockelford, yeah. on the side, um, uh, performing a blues song. It was, uh, I mean, I, that was my favourite uh, performance, like, you playing your guitar solo and everything else, but it's like... Well, um, going into your business, like it's, uh, I know there's quite a lot of people that uh, struggled to like, well, not just like go all the way to the top, but like starting from the bottom. Like, what what advice would you give people who is like looking to start a business like like you are today, and like not just like music, but also like you said as well, doing film. But I, I mean, the biggest advice I've got for for anyone in anything is remember everyone else is struggling. Yeah. Mm. And so the thing I've, I've said a lot is that, that one of the biggest differences about having a neurodi neurodivergent is p people see that you struggle. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you're neurotypical, you're struggling. You just don't often tell people. That's the big the big thing. You hide it. You know that you have to hide it or else people will judge you. Whereas I think a lot of people who are neurodiverse can't hide it. Yeah. And I think that's that's the, the big way forward is just realise that a lot of the people have the same fears, same doubts, same troubles as you. And, you know, you, you may be cognitively different, but co coming into that, you just realise, you know, if it's your first day at work and it's someone else's first day at work, they're probably just as scared as you. They just might seem like they've got it together better. So I think that just knowing that you're not necessarily alone in that sense, no, I think can help massively. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you there because uh, yeah, because I've I've known um quite a few musicians at university, been at Salford University, and uh, quite a few um have been in the autistic spectrum. Um, but I think it's the it's the practical side of it, you know, like when you're making music, but also like producing it at home, but also going having the experience in the studio as well it's um be like, like you said it's like you're not just like doing just one industry but you're, you're also like um doing it in the film but also like doing the music and the sidelines as well like it's um i've i've known quite a few people in the spectrum who uh want to do make music out of a living but it was uh, qu quite challenging because it's mainly because of the recognition, like how you promote yourself. And, um, but now today, I think a lot of people now are relying on TikTok the most than any other like social media site in general, because um, YouTube, it's, uh, it is, well, I think general social media is like a really reliable source, but I think it's, uh, it's better to promote yourself outside of that area to promote your business as well as like, as just uh what's going on in general but like 
the way how, how you like market and promote your products like it's um i know it's like through television and everything else but like other ways like social media and outside of it as well so i mean in my career marketing's it's all word of mouth so i don't do a lot of marketing no. but i speak to a lot of people who do do marketing so mm. it, it, it's not it's not terrible tiktok is massive at the moment yeah it is. um so obviously uh, if you're on TikTok in making videos. However, I, I genuinely think there's a lot to be said for these old fashioned relationships where you meet important people yeah, and you go out and you have like an alcoholic drink or non-alcoholic, but that sort of atmosphere with them and you you become friends with them. I, I've got a, an agent who I work with who passes me on a lot of work. And I mean, it's a mutual... Um, benefit for both of us to be working however you know sometimes we, we do stop for a chat and have a good chat all the time and unfortunately it poses a bit of a question for us as the neurodiverse yeah. because it's something we do struggle with um yeah but i i think in general everyone wants to talk yeah uh, everyone yeah. always enjoys it and even if you're not or if you're struggling to put your point across i don't think it really matters i think being available to socialize is more important than actually what happens yeah during during that yeah um, if that yeah. makes sense yeah it does um, make sense. yeah definitely hmm. so I, I definitely think try and work on making good contacts and i wouldn't say necessarily oh try and you know date the fancy people in the music industry and uh, you know like court them and yeah. you know, try and find an agent that way what i'd say is that if there are people you get on with foster those connections and don't you know, don't let them die if that makes sense yeah it's like what what you mean is like it's uh really push yourself out there but like doing it in um i was gonna say much more sensible way but it was uh, not so like sure like how to like create the proper, proper terminology there but it's like well, what he said I think it, the right way yeah just i think if, if if there's a good vibe going between two people keep it going yeah because what happens is someone will always be like if, even think about your mum for instance it, like, they'll just be like oh look at my son he's a musician oh isn't he amazing think how much publicity you get just through that like it, you don't get much as you used to now it's like um because I've but um, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah, if you yeah. try and keep that going, and then because you want people to signpost to mm. your content. So let's say you've got TikTok, you want your friends to be like, look, my mate's got a TikTok. Mm. I think we, we shouldn't undervalue that verbal side of it, that physical yeah. side of it. Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, it's that's what's bringing people to your content. And you might blow up on something like TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, but it's real people behind it behind it at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's um because what I was gonna say, because I know that's um because I know yourself already um well say working in the industry itself, but also like the um the other members, obviously Derek's still working in the industry, like in the mm -hmm. classical music area side. And uh because I know I've seen some videos of the rest of the rest of the um well not not the rest but some of the uh autistic superstars people i know carly ryan did a few uh performances for charity events for what i've seen on youtube and uh martin finn who's um did some gigs in mainly like small venues but still very really good and so but yeah it's just like um mainly for autistic people in general it's uh well because uh, the experience helps them like understand like how it works as well as just like making getting to know other people like so like, are you still in touch with like say um some of these people from autistic superstars so so i've not managed to stay in touch for a while i was in touch with oh, i forgot his name the uh the artist who was painting we yeah. were in touch for a while mm -hmm. um it, it's been it's been so long it's been like 10 years now it's been it's been yeah. 15 or something it's been it's really long yeah, time ago it. now mm -hmm. um but what i think being on the show what you realize is that so many people because because some some people struggle to talk yeah yeah this is a great way to express yourself and communicate with others without necessarily having to talk 
yeah that's what i do love about music is that it, it, it you can communicate how you feel what what you want your desires all through music without necessarily having to say a single word mm, yeah it's like music is a way to speak like i've actually heard that from um james hetfield releasing of metallica saying that it's like but everything you said is just is true like music is your your language it expresses your emotions and it's uh it's um it also shows you how you how you feel inside like the um in in terms of the melody and and the storyline of the lyrics as well because it's um i remember when i first watched the show i felt i felt so inspired i i definitely say they should um make another season in particular. They, they did they did think about it i did i did yeah. get some feel it like emails like three or yeah. four years afterwards um, and I just don't think there was a budget for it, unfortunately. No. But not. honestly, honest, it would be amazing to do another one. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, because it will definitely um, show the next generation of musicians, like not like like in all levels of the of the autistic spectrum. I know you you, you were one of the first, along with the um, the others that were part of the show as well. I know um, Derek Parabagini in particular, because now he's like because I've seen the um, the documentary he was in called um, the Musical Genius. Yeah. And it was, um, but yeah, same again, inspiring, just like Autistic Superstars. But if in years to come, they definitely do like another season of the um, Autistic Superstars, but maybe with the same presenter or maybe with another one. I, I would, it depends how um, the BBC will plan it. But uh, I think definitely, I, I definitely say make another season because it was definitely inspiring for me in particular to uh, be more passionate about the music, but also like um, see how... Um, they develop like how they started off but also like have the experience to like like basically know what it's like if that makes sense like really um get to know other people like present your musical talents and many more um so it, it was very good i mean to be fair there was a bit of a dark side to the the program mm -hmm. because i think in order to tell they want to tell a story at the end of the day they're making a documentary and they they did want some drama they did want to see people melting down they did want to see people getting upset mm. and i think it's it's difficult because I'd, it's hard to say how beneficial it is for people to see that on television yeah because there, there already is a stigma we're already thought of as you know bit bit crazy and mm. They 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 were like, oh, I was saying to my mum, oh, can't you get him to get angry and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And I had I had to work hard because I do struggle. I do struggle a lot with things like yeah. this. Yeah, me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. And oh, but the thing is, I know that I want a career and I want to work with people, and I don't want people to see that. And mm -hmm. I I work really hard at work to, so people don't see that side of me. And sometimes I get home. I'm a wreck and I'm crying and I'm tired yeah. and and but that's not the professional side of me that I want people to see no so it's difficult because on one hand it's a great platform for people to you know start a career and be seen to help educate but on the other hand it, it can actually be it can be quite hurtful being seen in that way and yeah. I I don't know what where the benefit is for the neurodiverse community to be seen more as that. And I know they were going to explain it and say, look, this is what a bad day looks like. But it, it was a bit tricky to be part of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't, let me see what you mean by that. Yeah, because it's, uh, well, yeah, it's like I said about us being in the spectrum, but we all have like our own um, ways of communication, but also we have like our own downsides as well. Like, you know, stress, definitely, definitely it's a really... Um, it definitely impacts yeah. our lives as well as just uh, when when something goes wrong, we start to like break down like really strongly and stuff like that. It's uh, but um, at the same time, it's quite we have like our own happy moments as well because it's like 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 yourself like in the in the music and also like capturing the sound for like films. It's um, it's something that you really love. I know, it, but of course you have to work hard like to uh, really make it sound professional, like especially when it comes to like recording portfolio with a local band so like so like, like everything's all nice and balanced but also like it's got it's like nothing's too loud nothing's too quiet nothing's like um like 
going all over the place in, in some way. Well, yeah, like I'm going to going into like your um, your work now because I know you got like up and coming projects coming up with the um, in the film industry. But like, what about in the um, music industry in terms of like being a sound engineer and also like, are you, are you still playing guitar and? So uh, I, I still play guitar, but mo mostly at home. Yeah, so I've been composing on the computer a bit. Um, although it's it's quite interesting. So through my work, I've met. I did this documentary on local musicians in North Wales. So now I've got some some contacts there. Really? So I think we might go uh, might go produce an album there. To be fair, fantastic. Because I've got a couple of scratch ideas. So when I get a bit more free time, I'm going to work on them, build out, flesh out a couple of tracks, yeah. take them to a studio, and do that. Because it'd just be fun to get out there again a bit more. Mm, yeah, definitely. It's as I've um, my, my grandfather used to have a caravan in North Wales, and um, it's actually just about uh, fifty minutes away from Londoner's town centre. It was at a caravan site, but it's um, but yeah, North Wales is is really nice. I mean, I've not been there for quite a long time ever since my grandfather passed away, but it's uh, in but that's been like in in Wales. There has been like some great musicians over there, like not just like the south or anything like that but it's great to like um see other connections as well like the uh because obviously it's um it is really hard to like work with a really big time artist say if you're working with like elton john or um ariana grande like it's um it is hard to get in touch with them but being really big artists but like uh, but it's um but you're mainly what you said before is like it's um it's like you're looking for the next big thing in some in some way i mean i don't like to sound like too like um like what's what's the word like um like too typical in some way but it's uh but yeah it's like because he's like working in the music industry at the sidelines as well it is really good because it's like like i said it's it you're not just doing just one job but you're also like doing more than just one I, I, to, the way i sit is i just do what i enjoy yeah and if people pay if people pay me all the better and if people don't pay me i don't really get care i don't really do this for the money hmm. I, I do it because it keeps me busy i find it interesting i love i love working with new people i love finding other perspectives on life because it, you, you, i couldn't imagine working with the same five boring people every single day that would drive me absolutely nuts yeah it's it, but you just like to um get to know other people then just like stick to one one artist it's uh um but it's like um, at the same time, but it's like not only just like helping them progress their career further, like create new albums to promote themselves even even higher, but also like introduce new songs to the public. It's uh, but at the same time, it's um, it's because it's something that you really love, and it, I, I mean I love that uh, side of the business myself. Like not just like composing music for myself, but also with other people. Because like, well, um. I'm working with a uh, singer songwriter next year for a um, up and coming album that's coming out next November. And mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not being like paid or like, or anything like that, but it's just because it's something that I love as well as, as you do. It's, um, but yeah, it's definitely helped me get more connections in some way. Yeah. It's just like get to know other people and um, see how they work and as well. It's just, it's great fun. Well, in all fairness, some of the projects that go best for me are the ones where I have just went in and it's like, it's not about the money. I'm just here for the for the day mm -hmm. and I'm having a good time because people people sense when you're actually enjoying yourself and you're actually having a good time and doing a good job. Like people can sense it off you. So sometimes just going and enjoying yourself is literally the best way to do it. Mm. Yeah, and everyone's having a good time. But you know, it it comes back round. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you there. It's uh, but it's like I said, it's just it's good fun, and it's what you love. Now it's um, because I know like with the um the BBC and everything else, it's uh also got like the ITV and it's like the CBBC as well. Because I know you did you said in your website you did like stuff for like children's television and so uh, what shows have you done? um so i've done phoenix rise and blue peter they're the main mm. ones for cbbc yeah like um, you were saying yeah, that, that that's it really um <laughs> with cbbc mm. 
so I, I mean i end up doing a lot of adverts to be fair so you you can't always see how many i've done in the sense because i do so many so we did one for ea sports uh two days ago mm, yeah so there's going to be a massive advert on the television yeah because i know ea sports have done like many video games over the years it's like i remember playing um well years ago the, the i think it was like a uh playstation one game football one i think it was like uh it was the world cup in 1998 it was uh can sports did like other other sports games as well it's like but it's a great experience it's like it's um but like like you said an advertisement i think he's in your website he said that you did work for mcdonald's as well like yeah so we did um promoted their football uh because they do like kids football as well Mm. so did a video about that as well yeah. So that went on their website. But no, to be fair, it was quite fun with EA Sports because we uh, had to record the the their little jingle like EA Sports. It's in the game. Yeah. And I was like, but you you hear sometimes this so you hear and see things so often, and then when you get to be part of them, it's amazing. So like I heard that jingle growing up hours and hours and hours every time I loaded up a video game. Yeah. And then yeah. to record it, I was like oh wow this is amazing mm. and and the same so i did this feature film and it's directed by lena heady and she plays cersei lannister in game of thrones mm. and i remember i remember one day it was like middle of winter i hadn't had enough sleep and i'm just looking over and she starts looking at me funny and i'm like why are you looking at me funny what do you want from me and i was like i was like Cersei lannister she wants to kill me like mm. it felt like a dream i was like what, what cersei lannister's got bad things for me it's like oh it's not Cersei it's the director she's directing this film <laughs> and she wants to know if the sound is any good yeah and I was yeah. like oh but it was so surreal and like joking so as well um the lady plays Catelyn Stark was in there too and you see these people for hundreds and hundreds of hours on the television yeah. and there I am having a laugh about electric cars with her yeah like oh yeah aren't they rubbish look how slow they go so yeah. it's sort of thing and honest, honestly it's like it's just so surreal when you get to embed yourself in moments that you didn't think you were part of and then you become part of them yeah yeah well thanks very much for your time david it's been a, an absolute pleasure talking to you and it's uh well i definitely share quite a lot of commonalities with you as well in terms of the music and sound it's uh but i gotta say it's been an absolute pleasure to see have this interview with you all right, thanks for watching, guys. And um, also, you can learn more about Dapper's work on the description box below on the up and coming projects he's got going on. And also, you can see more on his YouTube channel about autistic superstars and many more. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you too, Dapper. Bye bye.